Good evening and welcome to Masterclass Juniors. It's Wednesday, it's time to cook. I'm here with the little monster. Um, we are still celebrating Show Us Your Buns. Now, it's National Baking Day on the 17th of May. So, as a bit of a bit of fun, bit of a campaign, what we're asking for you is to show us your buns. So, I want to see your best bun recipe. Now, whether that's savoury buns, sweet buns, cakes, bread, you name it. You show me your buns, I'll show you mine. And mine today are pizza buns. So we're gonna take an amazing bread dough and we're gonna turn it into little buns. So they're really easy to eat, they taste delicious, you can put some beautiful flavors in. I'm gonna show you how to make a super fresh, delicious tomato sauce to go in the middle. But we're gonna start with dough first. Pops, I need 500 grams. Just pop it on there and just double check for me. Move it into there because Emily spent ages getting our shot there. So we've got 500 grams of strong bread flour. It's really important that you get the right flour. It needs to be either called strong flour, bread flour, or you can use pasta flour as well. And the, and the difference really is the protein levels in the flour are high for making bread. They are for pasta as well. So that helps develop the gluten, which develops the elasticity. Now, I've got dried yeast pops. I've got seven grams weighed out already. Pop that in. If you're using fresh yeast, you, can, you, you need to use double the amount. So you're looking for like 14, 15 grams. But we've got seven grams, and that's how much you usually get in a sachet. Now, I've got 10 grams of salt. Put that to one side. Don't put it directly onto the yeast because salt will kill yeast and your bread will not rise to its full potential. Okay. Right, now, I've got 325 mils of water. But add it slowly. Add two thirds of it, but pour it onto the salt first to dilute the salt and then get your hands in. Now, if you have any questions, please do post them in the Facebook feed because Emily's forgotten to ask any questions today, so she's a little short on questions. Doesn't mean I'm not going to ask her some, for some, but anyway, any questions at all would really help her out, okay? So let's add a little bit. It's really important when you're adding your water um, to add like two thirds of it and get mixing and then add more if you need it. If you don't need it, um, it's you don't have to add it, you see, because on a warm day like today, well, it's warm in our kitchen, it's actually snowing on the mountains over there. We've just had a snowstorm and a hailstorm. We've had sunshine, we've had rain, and we've got snow on the mountain tops today, so we've had all seasons. Um, so it's quite warm in the kitchen, though, so this dough will absorb more moisture than normal. So you might add, need to add a little bit more, so it's very much about looking for a texture, not a precise measurement on the water. So I think you could get away with popping that in and then roll your hand around the bowl in a claw motion, yeah? Imagine the kitchen mixer and it moves around the bowl. Do the same with your hands. Can you roll my sleeves? Yeah, your big baggy sleeves. There you go. Okay. Have we any questions yet, Emily? Uh, not oh, got a few people on this, this afternoon. Good. Good, right, touch more water, right, on there and start kneading. So when you knead bread, you hold it with one hand and you push it away with the other and stretch it. And the idea is to develop the gluten. And the only way to do that is to stretch your dough. Um, if you are particularly sort of, if your wrists are quite weak or you're not feeling particularly strong, use a mixer. If you haven't got a mixer, Mix the dough together and leave it in the fridge overnight. And there's a process called the overnight proof method, which basically means what Poppy's doing is she's stretching the dough and stretching and working out all the molecules so they're all in a line. Now, if you just mix the dough, it all ends up in a big ball, like a big knot. But if you leave it in the fridge overnight, it unravels itself overnight, so you actually don't have to knead the bread at all. So, it, you know, if, if if you're not feeling strong enough to do what Pops is doing, put it in the fridge and leave it overnight. Do it the next day. Right, keep stretching. Come on. Is that all right, Emily? Yeah, perfect. Good. 
So this dough will take at least an hour to prove and double in size, okay? So Pops, I have been very kind and I've made you one already. Oh, yeah. So pop that one into there. It, no, it takes 10 minutes kneading, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Just take that off there first. Okay. Let's scoop that dough out. You might need a little bit of flour now, Pops. Because it's a little bit more. And let's just show Emily the gluten structure on this, okay? So which camera are we working to? Okay. So a little bit of flour on there. And what we're going to do is we're just going to scoop the dough out. All right. Hang on. And then let's look at this. Can you see the structure there, Emily? Yeah. And if I actually tear into the dough a bit, you see like a structure. Do you see that kind of structure? Yeah. That is the gluten that's developed, all right? So, knock the air out, Poppy. So the idea is to now knock the air back out. It's quite more like lighter. Yeah, it's had time to develop. The yeast is fed from the natural sugars in flour. They've created carbon dioxide and they've allowed the dough to expand. The gluten has developed and it is now ready. So, what I want you to do, Pops, is tear it in half, and we're gonna divide this into portions, okay? So let me just get a board here, and we'll do this on here, all right? Hang on, hang on, okay? So, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pop that on there, and we're gonna cut it in half, cut it in half again. So we've got one, two, three, four, all right, and then let's just do that. So these are gonna go into eight portions. I actually have a little bit more dough here because I, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. eight. Now, let me talk to you about this little bit of dough. So I've cut these into eight portions. This piece of dough here is left over. Now, what I want you to do is put this in a container in the fridge and leave it until you bake bread another day. And what happens is this will ferment and this will develop and it will really get that amazing sort of sourdough fermentation flavour to come through. Um, there's a lot of bakers will do this and they'll keep a bit of bread and they'll store it away and next time they're making bread they'll chuck it in and it's like a flavour bomb of, of fermentation and flavour, because the one thing bread really loves is time to ferment and develop. And then next time you make bread, take a little bit off it and put it in the fridge again another day. And you end up in this cycle, and what you'll find is your bread has this amazing, bready, traditional flavour. Um, so it's well worth doing, I promise you. It's a tiny little bit of bread. Dough, but it works really well. I'll put, it. put that to one side and we will pop that in our fridge for another day. Now, I'm just gonna let these rest for a minute, okay? And we're gonna talk about the pasta sauce. Very simple recipe. Uh, I've been making it like this for years and years, all right? So I've got two bowls here. And what I would like you to do, Pops, is open this tin of tomatoes. Now, this is the cheapest tin of tomatoes I can find in the supermarket, okay? We're not working with premium, high-end Italian tomatoes. Cheapest chips, all right? Open that up for me. So it goes on the side there, like that. Yeah, All right, and then turn that. And keep going until the lid's removed. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the tin tomatoes and we're going to pour them through a sieve. Because what you find with cheap tomatoes is they put a bit of water in. They're a bit sneaky like that. And they just pop a bit of water in so it weighs more. Don't. I'll do that. So you've got to be very careful because it's very sharp. Right? Pour that through the sieve. And what we're doing is we're getting rid of the excess water. Okay? Now, can you uh, grate two cloves of garlic. These, I've got two because they're quite small. Normally, I think in the recipe I've written one, but they're very small, those ones. Um, yeah. So we're just using like a plain, uh, and we're just gonna grate the garlic so it just minces it through really fine. You could chop it, crush it, whatever you like, but straight in. All right, a bit easier than chopping, isn't it? Oh dear. There you go. Right, have we got any questions yet, Emily? Uh, 
Oh dear, has Emily got any questions for me? Um, yeah, like, if you've got any tomatoes like this, is there anything that you can add to it to make it a little bit more, like, spicy? Could you Ooh, add anything to it? Endure or? paste. Endure paste is a product that, it's a Calabrian salami. Calabria is a part of Italy in the south, and they make very spicy salami, but they make a very soft, spreadable salami, not like um, a firm sliced one like this. Um, and you can get it in jars, and it's really, really spicy, but it's super delicious, okay? You could add some of that to it, that would be really good. You could add a few chili flakes. Um, you can kind of add what you like. I mean, there's nothing to say you couldn't just go totally different flavors. Yeah. You know, it's, it's yes, we're doing little pizza buns, but, you could change it around, you can add some chilli, you could do what you like, you could, you know, you could do pesto, in, green pesto instead of tomatoes if you like. So can you see that there Emily? Now, I've just got really nice tomato pulp, okay, instead of all that liquid. So you get rid of that liquid for me Pops, I will, put, just put it over there, it's fine. I've now got a really nice tomato sauce. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to add a little dried oregano to it. What about fresh herbs, please? Yeah, you could put fresh herbs. I mean, dried oregano is one of the very few dried herbs that really works. Mm -hmm. There aren't many that are good. Mint works, oregano works. I think that's it for me. I don't think I'd use any other dried herbs. Right, right. extra virgin, awesome. never. Fresh all the way. Extra virgin olive oil, and this gives us flavour and it gives us a silky texture and a richness to it, which is delicious. What about rosemary? No, fresh in the garden all the way. A little bit of salt in there. Rosemary grows in the garden all year. There's no excuse for dried, in my opinion. Since when there's one, everybody can keep alive. Yes, anyone can keep rosemary alive in the garden. Anybody. Right, so that is our lovely fresh tomato sauce. Now, if you're going to make this sauce, don't make it to keep in the fridge. It's not that kind of a sauce, okay? It is open a tin, pour it through a sieve, mix it, use it, and then make another uh, next time. Don't make this and put it cause in, in the fridge for a, uh, another, another day because it's, it's really fresh and vibrant and light. It's quite a delicate sauce. Um, it's not really designed for keeping. Could you just pass me a cloth please, Poppy? Because I would like to wipe this. Thank you. Right, okay, so we've got our fresh tomato sauce. We've got some fresh mozzarella balls. So these are not the really expensive um, buffalo mozzarella, okay? This is cow's milk mozzarella. This is more for cooking. I wouldn't cook a really expensive, authentic buffalo mozzarella. I think I would just eat it, all right? Um, so buy the fresh cow's milk mozzarella. You could also use the grated as well if you want, but I like the fresh, I think it's really nice. Right, Poppy's desperate to roll. So I'm going to show you one, yeah? So a little bit of flour. I'm going to take the ball, all right, steady. And then we're just going to roll it once, roll it twice, turn it over, roll it once, and roll it twice. Okay, so are you watching carefully on yeah. this puppet? Yeah, roll once, roll twice, Good, then. she was listening. <laughs> right, so one spoon of tomato sauce, smack bang in the middle. All right, not too much. If you'd have just used the tin tomatoes, it would have been too wet. Now all we've got is that nice, fresh pulp. 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 Pulp, yeah. Pulp. So, mozzarella. You have to remember to squeeze this mozzarella to get any excess liquid. Because if I show you how much liquid has come out just by resting it in there. So let's just tear a bit of mozzarella. There we go. Two little pieces. Doesn't need a lot. Is there any um, other cheeses you could use, please? Yeah, you could use cheddar, you could use uh, brie, taleggio. Use what cheese you've got. It would be my you know, suggestion. Poppy, can you just nip out to the garden? I've got some fresh fennel tops. We bought some fennel herbs the other day from, this, from the garden centre, and they're planted and ready to go, so they're really easy to get hold of. I like fennel with my tomatoes and garlic. It's a very Tuscan combination of flavours. Um, so just add, you could add a couple of fennel seeds if you don't have fresh, or you could buy the bulb of fennel and use the herb on the top, 
or if you're growing it in the garden, just send out your daughter or your son to pick up some for you. Thank you very much. Look at that, she's got the right one. So, if you just smell this poppy, what you need to do is when you pick a herb and you want to smell what it's going to taste like, just sort of rub it like that and then you smell it. Jackson. That's all right. So I rub it with your fingers and then smell it. What does it smell of? Quite strong. It's aniseed. So it's a, it's a really lovely flavour. So I'm just going to put one delicate little piece on there. And then we're going to pop some pepper on there. And then I've got a couple of pieces of salami. This is a Milano salami, so it's kind of quite a basic one. But now by adding a little bit of black pepper and a little bit of fennel, we've now gone Tuscan. And the salami in Tuscany is called finacuna, and it's amazing. Fennel and pork, oh, just amazing. Right, now, to encase this, are you watching? Because yes. you need to do this next. I am watching. All right, we'll do it together. So it's like a little money bag. We're just going to, no, let go. No, let me do it, and then you do one. So we're just going to draw it all together like that. Do you see how that is? Like now, if I just turned that over, and baked it, you'd end up with this massive bundle of dough. So what we're going to do is we're going to pinch it like this, pinch it off. So now we haven't got that great big pile of dough. And then you just turn it over, and now we've got a little pizza bun. Pizza parcel. Pizza bun. Because we're doing buns. Uh oh. No. And then we're just going to place it on our masterclass baking tray. And because it's got that non-stick base with little air pockets, it's going to be perfect. Okay, and then what we're going to do, we need to start rattling on now and getting some of these made. All right? I've got some in the oven ready to show you later. I was just hoping that Emily had some cork of questions for me. Any, we're, a bit, we're a bit light on questions today, aren't we? We are. Um, so anybody who's just joined us, what we're making is a pizza bun, okay? So we are um, celebrating National Baking Week on the 17th of May this year. And every Wednesday and Saturday, I'm going to be creating an amazing bun recipe. So last Saturday, we made the most beautiful brioche style lemon ice buns. So if you missed that, Go back and watch it because they were immense. They were really, really good. I was so pleased with those. Today we are doing pizza buns. So it is a traditional uh, dough recipe with a fresh tomato sauce, mozzarella, salami, a little bit of fennel, beautiful. Um, and then on Saturday, I'm gonna show you how to make some ciabatta buns. And with those buns, I'm gonna teach you how to make porchetta. Porchetta is a Tuscan roast pork with rosemary and fennel and garlic and ah, oh, my mouth is watering thinking about it. And we're going to serve that with salsa verde on Saturday. It's going to be really good. But let's get on with these. So, a little bit of mozzarella. I know, I'm just doing this bit, okay? So a little delicate piece of fennel. I know delicate doesn't go very well with you. Touch of black pepper. We need to get a couple of these made to see. You do one, I'll do one. All right, well, you're in the way, so two slices of that. Okay. Well, Bill is asking, do you think that could use ricotta drained or blotch cheese instead of Ooh. mozzarella? Ricotta, if you drain, yeah, you're really right to, to point that out. Drain the ricotta, push it through a sieve, squeeze the moisture out. Moisture is your enemy. You do not want moisture in there. Goat's cheese, beautiful. Um, if, I wouldn't do salami and goat's cheese because they're, they're quite strong. Um, fresh tomato, goat's cheese and basil would be beautiful. If you've got a bit of red onion marmalade and goat's cheese, that would work really well together. Maybe a few walnuts in there, that works. I mean, the principle of what we're doing, what are you liking? Um, go for it. Um, choose your most enjoyable flavors, okay? But just please don't put pineapple in. Pineapple and pizzas, it's wrong. It's wrong, <laughs> yeah, wrong, wrong. wrong, like, wrong. Like a bit there, I know. I could do cheese and marmite ones of these. They would Absolutely be good. Absolutely not. Right, let's Jesus. roll this. Oh, come on. It's my objective in life to get Marmite in as many recipes as I can. I'm going to get into the front. Here you go. Done. Okay. I'm done. I don't mess it out. So there we go. Right. So, um, lovely fresh tomato sauce on there. So, the bread pea, could you yes. do like half and half of like wholemeal flour? Oh. And yeah, you could do. Um, what you find with wholemeal flour is it absorbs a bit more moisture and it has, isn't quite as glutinous. 
so you don't necessarily get the stretch. Yeah. And you can totally do it, yeah, of course. Mm. Oh, you, you're starting to spin them, are you? Yeah. But, um, I'll, so I'll show, I'll, I'll go back to show us your buns again. So what we're asking people to do is show, share us their bun recipes with us on a hashtag, uh, show us your buns. Um, so please do send me recipes. And there is a competition to win some amazing masterclass bakeware. I've got this beautiful five piece gift set here of the new masterclass bakeware. This is the smart ceramic. Nothing sticks on this. Honestly, you want to get it. If you love baking and cooking, you totally want to get your hands on this stuff because it is so smooth. It is, the non-stick on it is fantastic. You get a um, cooling tray, muffin tray, little baking tray, big baking tray, and a big monster roasting tray. And what's really good about these is it works on induction as well. Um, so it really does work well. It stacks inside each other. So if you fancy winning this, you're gonna have to show me your buns. So send me your pictures in. Um, hashtag it with show us your buns and then I'll see it and we will decide on the 17th of May who's got the best buns, all right? So pop those onto there, Poppy, and then that'll do because we've got some really lovely ones in the oven already that we can show people. So what we're gonna do is add a touch of oil. This'll help glaze it up. Can you grate some Parmesan cheese on the top, Poppy? Poppy, well, would, um, would they, so this is answer question on what they were would you recommend stopping rusting in the dishwasher? Rusting in the dishwasher, yeah. uh, always take them out and dry them. Sometimes um, dishwashers get very wet, don't they? And, and it, if you don't open the door and let the moisture out, it stays inside and yeah, you end up, but dry them off as soon as they're washed, dry them off, um, and then they shouldn't rust. Get masterclass ones, they won't rust. Um, so, to release the moisture, I'm just gonna use my knife and just pop a little hole. So they kind of almost look a little bit like an Eccles cake. Can you sprinkle a little oregano on those for me? Just for flavor and color, because that'd be lovely. Oh, it's, it's, that best, it's that time of day when you get to eat. I love it. <laughs> it's the best time of day. Time of the day. Always, <laughs> always the best time of day. It's been a busy long day. So if you have any questions, I suggest you get them in pretty quickly because I'm going to start eating soon. Emily's going to hit the music and we're done. Right, let's get these in the oven. Oh, you're getting the other ones out. Bring them out, pop them onto that. I feel the music coming on soon. <laughs> I'm going to pop those into the oven. Oh, look at those. That one's mine. Okay, so you can see well, you can see, can't you? <laughs> so, we're going to get a... Do you want to pop them onto there? I'm going to cut one in half. We're going to have a little taste pops. They look feeling. So, perfect for lunch boxes. Everything's inside. Hang on. I reckon you could pop that back in. Oh, yeah. yeah? You don't want to lose any of the good stuff. You don't want to lose the good stuff. But please, have a go at this recipe. If you want the recipe, go to masterclass.co and you'll find it there. Um, all our recipes that we create um, are straight on masterclass.co's website. Be careful. I am. All right? Um, and please join me on Saturday for the most amazing Italian roast pork and ciabatta buns. They're gonna be really delicious. Right, Pops, there you go. Have a little taste of that. It might be hot, be careful. Have a little nibble. You can have a nibble. I will. I'm hot. I don't need asking twice. <laughs> I'll burn for you. Mm. Oh, good. Really good. I don't want to burn my mouth. Um, please, engage with us. Show us your buns. I really want to see some recipes. Have you had I want any? to give away, yes, I want to give away this piece of equipment, five piece set. Um, to somebody who's got an amazing bun recipe. So I am watching, waiting for some beautiful recipes. Thank you very much for joining us. I will see you again on Saturday at 10 a.m. Um, here on Facebook. We're also on Instagram as well. 
um, and we are on YouTube, so you can see us all live or go back and see it later on if you are busy. But thank you very much, have a great evening, and I'll see you soon.